Hi everyone, this is Jason from Nathaniel. In this lesson, I'm going to focus on a topic which I'm very, very passionate about. Folk arpeggios. Arpeggios used for a variety of folk music. And I've composed like a standard melody which will go with this entire left hand saga of events. And there will be something for everyone. If you're a beginner, you can follow along. You can do a lot of work. And if you're an advanced player, you can definitely gain a lot of things to develop your hand independence. And all of these arpeggios I've kind of developed organically, you could say, along the way, like folk music in general, by playing with a lot of artists. And even in a place like India, there's so many different kinds of folk music which is there, which I have the opportunity to play. And uh, also outside India, I'm very influenced by genres like bluegrass, uh, Irish folk music, Bulgarian dance folk music. So I, I just like a lot of the folk elements in music for some reason. It just sounds, th that's sort of what um, has built me as a piano player and as a musician in general so I always like to go back to folk so this lesson could also be a way to get some of these folk techniques to any melody this is actually melody independent so you may be playing twinkle twinkle little star or, or a heavy metal song for all I care and still play it in a folk style so if you ever want to make a YouTube performance video on how to uh, on playing a song in a folk version or a folk style, you definitely want to watch this lesson. Okay, and if you're a beginner or an advanced player, there's something for everyone. The notation for all of my variations, this is going to be a two-part series. So the variations for all of them are available in a nice, neat PDF file along with MIDI and MuseScore uh, files, which you can open in any platform or software convenient for you. It's all waiting in a folder on our Patreon page you just have to go there there'll be a post and not only this lesson a lot of things past present and future will be there on patreon before we get cracking it'll be awesome if you could hit that bell hit the subscribe if you're a new person or if for some reason you forgot to subscribe please don't forget subscribe right now i'm telling you to do it please do it right now and then uh, leave us a like Leave us a comment with what you thought, thought about the lesson and let's get cracking. So, I'm going to introduce you first to the melody and I'm going to play the melody with a simple bass pulse so that you learn the melody very well. There is notation if you need to look at the notation. If you don't read, don't worry, you can still follow along. No problem at all. So, I'll play you the melody with a simple A pulse and by the way, this song is on the A major scale. three sharps C sharp F sharp G sharp okay let's roll the melody and then I'm going to first teach you the melody so you need to know the melody really well throughout the lesson it'll be the same tune and the first mel first part we are going to do the melody with an arpeggio pattern which I'm sure you'll be able to crack then we'll embellish the melody we'll try and ornament it and make it sound really tasty and then in part two we go all out we just dive into all sorts of techniques okay so melody okay Notice my left hand is just playing like a single root octave thing. That's the root of the chords I'm trying to play. So in pam 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 pam, that's D major. Cha cha na na, come back to A major, F sharp minor na cha na 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 na, or ba ba da da di. That's an E over G sharp. Ba da again. One more time. Get my fingers as well. Try and do it with singing. Sing and play. Very important. So. Again. Last 
last time. That was half of the tune. Okay, so then moving forward. Second half. So both the first and second halves of the melody seem to start after beat one. That's what I kind of liked while composing it. The pulse in the left hand would always be helpful because eventually you have to bring in that left hand with stuff, with arpeggios and and chord patterns. Sing along. You see, slowly but surely, I'm trying to get my piano to copy my voice, so I can do. You see, I get all those chops easily with with the voice. So you just try to emulate that pretty much on the piano. That's why I always encourage singing while you compose the stuff. So. get all that and now the second half can do that stuff as well we leave this for the latter segment of the lesson where i talk about some embellishments for now let's nail the melody Let's get it with the bass. Let me try and walk you through what the left hand is doing. A, D. Remember that F sharp wax before the D hits because the D is at the on beat and F sharp is at the off beat. Two and three and four and one and two and mm, ja, boom F sharp. Bam, bam, ba, da, da. E over G sharp. So you could play any G sharp bass or E bass. Up to you. Again, please. Okay, get that going. Very important to start like this. Always sing and move your head. That's generally recommended. That's what I keep saying. I sound definitely like a broken record, but that really helps to to play the instrument or any instrument. Even if you're a guitar player or a bass player, moving the head and singing are the most important ways to get better at that instrument. Okay, now let's dive into our arpeggios. So the left hand arpeggio pattern, which I have for you. It, the first one is going to be very very playable let's go through the chords first of all a major d major so sometimes i play d major with an a bass so it becomes easy to shift and becomes more like a plagal cadence of four going to one so they lot a lot of them play it like that so with the same a d over a a so Da na 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 na, and now we go to F sharp minor. Da na 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 na. We'll probably try the melody with these triads. Maybe inversion. F sharp minor. 
here I am doing E over G sharp. I like that climb F sharp minor. Ba 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 E over G sharp A again, please. F sharp. Ba 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 de de ba da and again. Okay, now that uh, chord roots are done, blocks are done, arpeggio time. So the first chord for pretty much every chord, I'm trying to make my arpeggio a bit more than what a triad gives me. A triad gives me three notes, but the arpeggio can uh, you can add. So I do root, third, fifth. So that's covered, and then I copy whatever note is played by the pinky or the lowest note. To the top end, A, C sharp, E, A. So this is the basis of the left hand arpeggio. A, C sharp, E, A. This gives you a lot more options, lot more flexibility, lot more rhythmic choices. So that one. Pattern number one will just be just that. So this is what I could call as the normal or the basic pattern. So I'll sing along. So I always like to isolate my right hand. So don't forget the right hand. Sing, sing what the right hand is eventually going to do. Now that your focus is on this guy. So. What did I do for D? Okay. If you read the notation, check it out as well. You can pause the video and get a. We download the PDF. So. That's the D chord. Then I come back to A. Now with the, when I end with A, I like to kind of glide to F sharp via this G sharp. So A C sharp E G sharp F. Now back to the F sharp minor. Tum 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 tum. Now G. G sharp or E over G sharp, meaning you'll be playing G sharp with the pinky and inverting. This is how I'm playing E over G sharp. Just get used to that shape. Back to A major. A lot of A majors in there. So da na 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 D, changing to A major. Pam 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 pam. That's helping me go to F sharp minor. You can ignore that. Pam 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 pam. You can just play, and I just thought I'll sneak in that G sharp. It passes well to F sharp, the relative minor. Again, please. the right hand until the left hand is confident let's bring in the melody now one more time slower That's the bass structure. Already sounds full to me, I think. But there's going to be more. Get this going. So fast. That's fine. Play at a speed you enjoy. But 
whatever you think the music resonates well with play at that speed i like this speed simple okay great so melody is sorted chords are sorted arpeggios are sorted so at the last part of this particular video which is part 1 of a two part series i'm going to look at some melodic embellishments and we'll try and look at it in a very informal way i have done a lot of other videos on melodic ornamentation but for this i thought i don't want to leave you with just the bare bone melody let's try and dress it up with some ornamentation and most of this ornamentation uh, i can go on and on about how i was influenced by it i could say that singer influenced me to play a melody this way or that genre gets me to play that way or maybe i'm inspired by the guitar or by the violin or the flute or the cello or any instrument so as a piano this we are a pretty much a chameleon kind of a instrument or a personality playing this instrument so when i say chameleon i mean you need to be inspired by everything around you the genres the players the atmosphere and all instruments so the piano gains energy from other instruments you can't say that with a lot of the other instruments out there which is why the piano has a very very diverse way of even learning the piano there are so many ways to learn it and every teacher will have their own way and that's how this instrument has evolved it's it's an incredible instrument and it it relies more on 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 the coordination between the two hands so when it comes to melody we struggle a bit because there's one problem with the piano which you may already know i can't i can't go in between a and a b i cannot glide like a violin player can glide a singer can do all sorts of things with their voice so there are a lot of limitations so that is why we try to get inspired by proper melody instruments like violin flute the human voice great singers from great genres and learn from them and that's exactly what's going to happen now okay let's dive in so to some ornamentations i'm first going to have some fun with the melody and then i'm going to show you what i'm doing while doing all this i think or i i think my left hand still held the fort you know you know supported the right hand really well so that's the other challenge of playing the piano you're not just singing there you're singing and playing another instrument here so it requires a lot of practice so when you practice this stuff don't do it and expect the result to happen immediately it didn't happen for me it took me about 2 uh, weeks to to make this exercise and then another week to practice it myself it was not easy even for me at least the other variation so it takes time so as long as you enjoy the process it should be cool fine so what did i do there to ornament first off so let's let's figure that out so so that's a very like a uh, guitar hammer on pull off hammer on technique tao da tao tao da so it's pretty much ripped off from the guitar but on the piano it sounds like a piano so there we go Let's try that you know the whole melody i'm not going to talk like i'll just do it in fragments so you can understand it as it moves forward tere chure tao dao tere chao now what where the piano can go interesting would be you can stack a note you can add a note which even a guitar can do check that out so i'm i'm uh, this is what we call as a double stop on the piano where you can add in an a or even an e why a and e a and e are the root and the fifth of the scale so they will pretty much go with anything so stack it up so 
There we go. See? Now, since you are already whacking E as the melody, play A at the higher. But don't overdo it, right? Or like that. So play with the high A. Now, now you can do like a a carom flick, like playing carom board. So, so that that's a glide from the middle to the ring finger. Well, if you want to practice this technique well, you'll have to do a carom glide from pretty much all all your fingers. Yeah. At least it's not all your toes as well. So you should figure out that technique with all your finger combinations. For here, right, it's middle to ring and I'm adding the pinky if you can to play that A. That's the, that's the expression there. And do it however you find tasteful. Or make it more subtle. Like a slide. Not. You can make it more quicker. Now it becomes more like a flam, thra, or subtle. So whole story again. Right? You can do the same uh, hammer-on thing. Right? So very violent thing as well. You can also go a little bit on the genres. If you take this in a gospel environment, a lot of the gospel organ players will tend to play something like this. It's also a very vocal thing. You do that thing. Obviously, I'm not a vocalist who can do that so well, but I hope you got the idea by what I meant. So to get that, to our advantage, the pinky finger is the weak one, right? So anyway, you won't play that ghost note. You won't play that hard. So it's a good thing in a way that the biology of our hand, the way our hands have evolved over time, the fact that your pinky is weak is actually a good thing, you know? And the fact that even your ring finger is sometimes locked. So... It's really good if you think about it. There are a lot of positives with the, the the constraints of our hand, if you think about it. A piano player has to think of each finger. So each finger kind of has a personality. So let's put that together. So that was the gospel thing. So... to mess up your left hand though be careful if you like that that's a passing pentatonic run which I just came up now I guess Now the problem is I'm low here. So to finish the piece, I could finish it off by playing octaves. And close the job there. Because now the, the person's ear was around here. So if I play octaves after that run, it'll 
just make the second part of the melody how do i put it maybe a lot warmer in in terms of the texture or a lot thicker depending on how you think about it so let's put that together again octave one more time slowly while you do these ornamentations remember that there's whatever you do with your face is a bit un, out of your control so try to let loose when you play facial expressions are very important as a player as a singer as any musician but if you think about what your facial expression should do it becomes very structured and scientific so uh, i really don't care what i do with my face and i think over time that helps me play better so the, i i don't know how to teach you this this comes with each person playing but let your self loose what will the emotion definitely will come from your face because even when you talk to a person and you want to convey an emotion really strong to that person your facial expressions matter so obviously you need that while playing your instrument so whatever your facial expressions may be in real life i guess throw that away and bring the musical expressions when you play the piano right you don't need to ever know what you do but remember that you should let loose okay guys so that's it for part 1 moving on to part 2 what we are going to do is i'm going to just quickly take you through a bunch of left hand arpeggio variations which will make this folk melody with folk arpeggios even more you know upbeat and even more vibrant and more representative of a folk music culture so stay tuned head over to part 2 if you don't find the video don't forget to subscribe turn on that bell whenever we release a new lesson it will be there don't forget to give the video a like that will help the youtube algorithm do something cool with our video hopefully and uh, download a copy of the notation it's all there on patreon along with my notes and uh, other stuff the midi is also there Cheers